In this episode, I'm going to cover saving and loading shared preferences. I'll start off by adding the shared preferences dependency, then I'll get that dependency, and then I'll save the shared preference and load the shared preference, and I'll talk about how I do that in a future. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go to the IDE. I have a project created with some bare bones application scaffolding. Okay, and I'll talk about that scaffolding here. I'll just cover it before we start in the into the to the application building. Okay, so what I want to do is look at the home page over here on the left in the simulator and I have a text field and I can type some values in and I could type in Brandon. And I I want to press on the next or the button here, the raise button, and I want it to go to the next page. And the way I want to pass that my name or whatever value is here to the next page, I want to save it to a preference. And then when the next page loads, I want to load that value from the preference. Okay, so how does that look in the code? Well, the code, I have the my app, which is the material application. It has one route, which will build the next page. And then so the home page is my home page, and I it's just a basic home page with a text field and the next and this raised button. So then I have a list view, which has a list tile of a text field. And you can see that if we look at the flutter outline, the same thing over here, list tile, raised button, and the text is next text. And then I want to go you know, right here is where I want to save the preference, the value. I want to use the controller of the text field to get the value and persist it in the shared preference. In the next page, it's a simple page. All it has is an app bar and a text. And then I want to replace this body here basically with my name um, or the value of that text field. Okay, so that that'll the shared preferences allows me to decouple my widgets and pass or persist the data in such a way I can reload it in another page quite easily. Okay, so let me look at this. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is actually import the dependency. So where do I do that? I go to the project and I'm going to look for pubsec.yaml and I want to add the dependency here. Well, what is it? What dependency do I need to get? So I'm going to go to the guide. I'm going to go to the browser and I already have it dialed up and I'll put this link in the description below. And there's two ways to find it. The first way is to go to pub.dartlang.org and search for shared preferences and you end up about here. And then what I want to do is go to installing. The second method, which I like to tend, I tend to use more often is I go to the GitHub project for Flutter, then I look for plugins, and then I scan down for all these projects, and here we go, shared preferences. And I could click on this nice little orange thing over here, the version, and I land at the same location. So that's slick, I like doing that. And then I click on installing, and it's a simple copy and paste. Copy the dependency here for the library. Copy. And I don't, I don't, I could run this at terminal, but I'll show how to do it in the IDE. Then I'll come back and copy the import if I need to. If it doesn't auto import, I can use that. Okay, so I'm going to go to the project. I'm in pubsec.yaml where I declare my dependencies because I can see the dependencies property up here. So I'm going to just put it down here next to the icons and shared shared preferences. Okay, so then I can click on packages.git. Well, if I press save, I could probably trigger it to say, warn me to do it. Or if I look in main, okay, it warns me here. I could press it here too. Go back to YAML and I'll just press git. Let's, let, let me minimize that over to the right while I have the package explorer open on the left. Okay, so our project explorer. Now that it's retrieved the dependencies, which I can see in the console output, I'm going to minimize this because I no longer need that. So I, what I want to do is I'm going to simply copy this import so I don't have to argue with the IDE about which thing to import. So I'll paste it in. And that is not used yet, so I will be using it in a moment to show you how I do the shared preferences. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is start writing my future wrappers, which will save and persist the data and get the data for me. Okay, so let's look at that. So I'm going to look at doing that in my class for, um, I could do it as a top level function or a, uh, a function in another class, but I want to do that 
in 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 my class here so you could put it where it makes sense to put it in your application but in this case i just want to put it somewhere that makes sense okay so home page that's my home page widget so i'm going to say okay i changed my mind i want to do this as a top level function so i'm going to go future and i want to return a bool here and i'll show you why here in a second and then i'll go save name preference and then i want to give it my name so this is how I'm going to persist the data. And I'm going to use async because I want to write it in a linear, this future in a linear fashion, one statement after another, instead of doing it like a command pattern or, or a chain of commands. So then I'm going to return. What am I going to return here? So the first thing I want to do is get a reference to the shared preferences library. And then I'll call this prefs for short. So I declared my intent, my in, my type on the left, on the uh, the consuming side, and then what I want to do is go await. Uh, I need to get access to the shared preferences uh, uh, library, and that's set up, and that's a future too. So I have to wait for it to complete, and so sometime in the future, then I I can go prefs dot set string because I want to persist my string. And then I'm just going to simply type in a string here for that name. And I could make this a constant, I suppose, but I'm not going to do that in this episode because I just want to keep it simple and short and sweet. And then I want to put name, the, the parameter. I got to import the, the library for future. So I'm going to go alt enter on that and then brings up the auto assist. Then I'll import it. And now that it has pref string, um, what I could do is I got to commit that value. So the return of the commit is going to be the Boolean property. So I know it commits it. It's, it's real. And I'll show you what I do with that in a little bit. And then now I want to load that. So let's say, what am I going to do to that? So I need to get this string, the name, the values. So I'm going to go get name preference. And then I'm going to go async so I can write my statements in a linear fashion. And what do I want to do here is I need to get, do the same thing. I need to get access to the shared preferences function or library or be, um, behavior and such. And then I want to return turn that. So I'm going to go prefs.get string. And it's going to be name. Here's the key again. Now that's a magic um, variables, what I call it, it where it make probably more sense to make that a constant variable, a, a top level variable, or maybe uh, encapsulate that in, in a class that has some static variables. So that way I don't, you know, if I wanted to refactor, it's easy. But in this case, I'm not going to do that in this episode. I'll let you do that in yours. This, I'm trying to keep it simple to, to get going here. So I'm going to go string name equals. So that's my name. All right, so now all I have to do is, um, what I could do is return my name. So that re will return in the future. Pretty easy. So now I have save my name and get my name. So I'm going to use get on the next page, and I'm going to use save on the first page, which will be my home page. So on pressed, let's go save name. And I'll make this, I'm going to extract it into a method. So I'll go create method. It goes to the bottom of the class. And now I need to get the name. So string name. And then I'm going to go equals. And I'll call the controller because that's one way to access the value in the text field. And then I'll return text. Okay, so that returns the, the value. I'm calling it my name um, in short. I could give it some help you know, help and hint text to say, okay, you should enter your name instead of just having a blank line. But I'm trying to keep it simple, like I said. Okay, so now what? Now I need to save it, save the preference, the name. And and then I'm going to say bool. I could make a future here too, but I, 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 just, I like this then pattern sometimes. Sometimes I don't, you know, it depends on uh, what I'm doing. So boolean committed and then I can do an inline function like this um, with a fat arrow function or I could do a method body there 
And then I could say, okay, navigator, I want to go of this context of this page. And then we're going to push, push name. And I have next page static variable route name. And the, what that will do is tell me to tell the application to route to the next page. And then I'll build that next page. As you can see up here, if I route, my route name is defined and will build the next page. Okay, so back to where I was. Okay, so let's just say, let's just check that behavior. I'll run the application, or re hot reload it. I've already typed in my name, so I'll just hit next. Okay, so Navigator does work, but I haven't uh, retrieved the value from shared preferences yet. So how do I do that? Okay, so I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go to the next page. Since I have a top level function, get preference data. So how do I do that? How do I get the value to here? When I, so what I wanna do is load the value on initialize, when I initialize the state, and then update the value. So first of all, I'll say, this is gonna be my private variable, my name, or, or, or some other generic value. Let's just name it my name for now. And I'm gonna go string, I'm gonna declare my, my type, and go name, and then I'll just say empty empty characters to start. So that way I don't have to deal with a, a, a null right here. Well, let's just say, what, what happens if I do leave that as a null? Because uh, it's initialized by null by default. Hot reload, I'm gonna hit the next page. Whoa, okay, lots of red. Okay, let's just give that a, a initial value of empty. And this is one way to do it, of course. You could do it in the init state as well, so you don't have to initialize it, I just give it empty up there, simple. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is when I init the state, initialize the state, I'm gonna go, I wanna load my name from the shared preferences and update that internal state variable. Okay, so how do I do that? I'm gonna get, it's gonna auto complete there, and then I wanna get the string value, which is a name, and this is gonna be an inline function with a body there, and I could say, I could do it another way. I could probably, you know, sometimes, a lot of times I like to go update name. So let's, let me do that. I'll just auto create that, create method. And I'll just put void because there's no, no return value there. Just to declare my state. So that way I can read it. Okay, so value, and that's my name. Okay, so now I'm gonna go set state because I need to update the, update the internal state variable up here. I can't just say uh, um, this name name equals name because that's a state variable and I forgot to make it private there. Okay, I could do that, but that's not gonna update it. And let's move that into the state because that says, okay, okay, let's actually update it and then render it. Okay, run, and let me run from the beginning up here, the debug button instead of hot reload lightning icon button. Okay, so next date, I'm gonna type in um, Jimmy this time. Next, and there it is, that was pretty easy. So let me go back and I'm gonna type in, uh, let's go Angie, and then select next. Okay, so what is it doing? Let's just review that process. And I'll show you the state variable. And yeah, it was pretty easy to, or, or show you the preference. Okay, so when, Okay, where was I? Okay, my home page. I when I tap when okay, my home page, when I tap on this next page, it goes to the next page, of course. But I save name first. This this method says get the value from the text field and then I pass that to the save preferences and then I use then and I just show the values committed. There's no point here. I could I could probably just go like this as well, just to, to say I'm not doing anything, but I wanted to show that I could return that value there and deal with that. Let's say it wasn't committed. I could probably show an error or an alert dialog. Whoops, something went wrong. Then I tell the navigator, okay, I'm ready to navigate to the next page with push name. And I have a static value that defines that next page route. And then I route to the next page let me just review the persistence value. So when I save the preference value name, I get the preferences library instance, and then I persist the value. 
actually I set the value and then I persist it, commit to the lib to the to the store. Okay, so then I go to the next page and then on initialization, I say update the name, which let me just refactor this because I like to name anything that's not publicly accessible to another library private. And so I renamed that, refactored it, so it's private. And then I can tell you it's only for this class. That kind of tells me the intent of this story. Like I'm writing the plot here. I'm My intent is for this class only. Okay, so then I give it, I pass it passes along that parameter uh, name, which is a string. And then I update the internal state variable in this, in this case. And I set the state. And that updates and re-renders or renders the, the page. So if I click next, it renders here. So if I look at the get name preference last time, I get the preference, get the string, and then name. Now, there's some other types you can persist and get to as well. I won't cover those in this episode. Yeah, it's pretty easy to look up in the library. So that concludes on using shared preferences to persist data to the store and retrieve it back using a future wrapper. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter, and I'll catch you later.